In this video, we're going to look at some more of the advanced model settings in GrabCAD Print. I've opened up my large spoon model and a basic cube to work with. I'm going to start by clicking on the cube and opening the model settings tab. I've already selected the color I want, and right below it, my first option is to control the part finish. Polyjet parts have two optional finishes, matte and glossy. Matte surrounds the entire part in a thin layer of support material. This provides a uniform matte finish across the entire entirety of the part, whereas glossy mode provides all upward facing surfaces with no support, therefore making a shiny smooth surface. Downward facing surfaces will still require support and will end up with that matte finish. A tool used to preview that in the top middle is we have this preview supported surfaces button. If I toggle that on, you'll notice on the spoon model that this checker pattern has appeared. If I look at the bottom of the part where I expect supports, you'll see that anywhere where I see that checker pattern, I should expect the surface to be matte since it will require support material. Whereas on the top, although I'm seeing a little bit of bleed through here, I'd expect the inside of the spoon and the top of the handle to all be glossy. Looking at my cube again, we can see that all of the upward facing and even the sidewall surfaces are not going to require support, therefore they'll be glossy. But if I look at the bottom, clearly the bottom surface will be matte. If I click on the More Settings button here and expand this menu, presented with some more options, the next one down the list is the uh, Support Grid Strength. So this gives you three different support grid options, Light, Standard, and Heavy. And this is how much model material is mixed into your support material to provide structural stability. The more model material that's mixed in with your support, the stronger it's going to be, and also potentially the more difficult it's going to be to remove. So for very small and intricate models where I'm concerned that post-processing may lead to potentially damaging the model, I may want to go with a light grid in hopes that it's easier to remove. Whereas parts that are made of agilis or ultra clear or very heavy models that require support underneath, I may look to a heavy default to give the support material more strength. It's important to remember that the, by itself, uh, the support materials are gel-like in nature, so they require at least some uh, rigid model material to give it that structural backing. If you ever see that your parts are tipping over, your, especially your support is tipping over, or you may even see sometimes that your support tower is wobbling when the head passes over, a good first step to trying to correct that problem would be to increase the support grid. Moving down, we have our base and core options. So by default, in most situations, a white core is going to be used. And essentially what's happening here is I've selected my external color. So in this case with the cube, it's uh, Vero Cyan Vivid. The outermost shell of this part will be Vero Cyan Vivid. And depending on the material configuration I've loaded, that can either be anywhere from a half millimeter to a millimeter thick. Below that, in order to create proper opacity, I will have a white shell. And again, based on what I have loaded, that shell will range in thickness from one millimeter to four millimeters thick. And any area inside of both of those shells, any thickness inside, will be a mix of all loaded materials. This mixed internal shell helps protect the head life of each individual head life on your printer essentially so that one printhead is not printing substantially more material than the others. The next option down is a clear core. Similar to the white core, again we have a shell type setup. With the clear core, I click on it here, I'm going to turn off my support preview, and you'll notice that one change, again I'll do it again just to show, the white core, clearly my part is opaque, and the clear core, it's gone back to translucent. 
In this case, I have my external shell of color again, same as in the white, but all, in, all of the internal shell will be filled with either clear or ultra clear, depending on what I have loaded. It's important to note that if I select a body to be clear or ultra clear, my core will default to clear, somewhat obviously, I want to see through the part. And also the other scenario where this may be the default is if, again, if I look at my spoon example, I have a texture imported onto this part. If any pixel inside of my texture or on of my texture is clear or transparent, the core will de default to clear. One other thing that's important to note with clear is in the case of this Vero Cyan Vivid, block I have here, no matter how thick I make that block, it will look roughly the same color. That's because the color shells on both sides are remaining the same, and the, the clear on the inside is helping to protect that no matter the thickness, it's going to look mostly the same. The next core option is body appearance. And I click on this, and you won't see much of a visual, visual change on screen. What's happening here is we're moving away from the shell system. In this case, the entirety of the body is just going to be Vero Cyan Vivid. Uh, this is useful in thinner models where thickness doesn't play as big of a factor, but it is important to note that um, as I make this part thicker, even though for all bodies as this part gets thicker, have I've selected Vero Cyan Vivid, they will look different. So because the opacity of the material will get greater as it gets thicker, I will see a difference in color. The final option is a support core. So when I click on this, I'll see that a additional option to define a core start depth has appeared. What happens with this core is I have an outer shell of my selected color and the rest of the inside of the body is filled with support material. This method is primarily used as a cost savings method, as our support material is generally lower in cost than all of our base resins. If you have a large blocky model, this would be a good strategy. It's important though with our core start depth that does two things. One, it can help control the color. So again, if you have a translucent material, like in this case, the Verocyan Vivid, the thicker I make that, the it's going to give a different color appearance. And number two, for large, heavy models, you may wish to go with a slightly thicker, outer, rigid shell for structural stability. All right, I'm going to change my finish back to matte, and I'm gonna go back to the default white core. And that gives me both of my coding options. So first on the list is just coding. If I check that, a couple things happen. First, I'm given a thickness control again. And I'm actually given another menu where I can select a color. Coatings do not impact your part geometry. They start at the outermost wall of your part and move in. Essentially what's happening is I'm defining a thickness and a material or color and for that thickness or the outermost surface of the part will be my second color and then the previously selected option will kick in. The last option is polishing layer. In order to use this feature I need to have matte mode turned on and I need to have at least Vero Clear loaded in my machine. Polishing layer is a little bit different than the coating in the fact that it does change your part geometry. It is actually adding an external shell of VeroClear around your entire part, and you define that thickness of that shell. The intention behind this function is that if I am planning to do post-processing, think hand sanding, orbital sanding, or even a media blast, I'm providing extra clear geometry on top of my texture that's intended to be worn away. The fear is that, especially with our ultra series materials, ultra black, ultra white, and our vivid colors, that external color shell is only a half millimeter thick. And if I'm doing aggressive sanding or mechanical sanding, I may end up going right through that entire external color shell and getting into my white 
internal shell. Again, ruining the, the external appearance. Again, it is very important to consider when using a polishing layer that because it's changing the external geometry, features like uh, threads or potentially hinges or similar type uh, latching mechanisms may not work as initially designed depending on the thickness you add.